Deep, in the far reaches of space, orbiting the distant star Antares, and sitting neatly in its gravity well and obeying a slow orbit, a large space station too big for the system it resided in sat and operated. A closer look revealed that this station did not have traditional external docking ports, but rather the entire sphere was littered with bays that ships could pull in and out of. These bays were enclosed with integrity fields to keep the atmosphere in and ion dust and other hyperspace particles out. Dakar was piloting his trade vessel, passing through the Antares system, when his reactor was throwing fault codes and the service reactor. Soon light came upon the heads-up display. Frustrated that he would be delayed and lose his fast delivery bonus, he brought up his commo screen and did a wide-beam broadcast for ship repair. Dakar called out, Requesting ship repair in transit with cargo. Request immediate assistance. Elise. Hi there. This is Elise with the Terran Dominion Ship Repair Facility Antares. We would be happy to assist you with your repair needs. We are located in the Antares system, about 30,000 miles from Antares itself, right across from the planet Sakantu. You can't miss us. We are moon-sized and well-lit. If you need a recovery vehicle to bring you in, please hail again. Otherwise, when you get close, a flight controller will guide to you an appropriate-sized service bay, and a service advisor will help you. Dakar paused as this extremely bubbly and friendly voice finished her statement bewildered by the efficiency and politeness of the person who spoke. He had never met a Terran before, but only heard stories, and frankly they were all terrifying, but this one sounded so genuine in her desire to help. Hey there, did you lose comms? We have your transponder beacon and can send out a recovery vehicle if you're having trouble. Beep twice on your emergency transponder beacon for a recovery. Dakar finally gathered himself. No, that will not be necessary, just gathering identification and transport logs. Heading towards your facility now. Great, see you soon. Dakar orientated his ship towards where this person, Elise, said the station was, and engaged his thrusters. The service reactor light began to flash shortly after engaging thrusters, and the reactor went into emergency shutdown procedure. He fired up his backup reactor, which only had 25% of the power his main reactor had, and set it to a low speed towards the facility. As he got closer to the coordinates Elise had provided, the view into his forward screen got continuously brighter, and he started to wonder if they had navigated him into the star of Antares itself. The ocular flare on his screen shifted, and he was able to see clearly this massive sphere station with hundreds of ships parked outside on grave buoys and a constant stream of ships in and out of bays all around this massive station that was, in fact, very well lit. Dakar toggled his radio. This is Dakar of the trade vessel. Disregard Femmes Acquire Credistics. From the Republic of Gnavaren, requesting a repair bay as promised by Elise. Hey there, Dakar. Glad you made it. We were starting to wonder if you were still coming, getting you over to traffic controller now. Tower. Captain Dakar. Rotate up to the fourth level of the station. Bay C-63 is open for you. Guide beacons are uploaded to your HUDs. Confirm coordinates received. Dakar thought to himself. This human is not as nice. Very robotic. Dakar radioed. Coordinates received moving to bay. Dakar lined up his ship and pulled into the bay and watched as the integrity field slowly enveloped the ship. Once fully inside, he engaged his repulsor thrusters to move the ship downward to land and engaged the maglocks to keep it there, a little off-center, but that happens. A ping for a video call appeared on the view screen, and Docker toggled it to start a Terran, or at least what Docker thought was a Terran came on the screen. The Terran had a large head with a square jaw, fur neatly parted upon the top, and a large growth of fur underneath the jaw. They also appeared to be wearing a type of spectacle, perhaps for inspecting ships. Hey there, Dokor. My name is Andy. 
and I'll be your service advisor. Before you disembark off the ship, we have our Atmo 78% nitro, 15% oxygen, and a few other MISC-E gases. Grav is set to 1G Terran Dominion standard. Can your species handle all that? Dakar replied. It is pronounced Dakar, like Dakar. And yes, that atmosphere and gravity setting are well within my tolerances. Andy. Coolio Doker. Well, hop on out, and we can talk about what brings you in. Docker left the bridge of the ship and moved to the ground-level access elevator. He triggered it to go down. It started to slowly descend as normal, but as it got almost to the bay floor, it slammed down and almost knocked Dakar to the ground. He was luckily able to grasp the support strut and catch himself. Andy. Whoa there, Dokor. No need to rush. We got time, dude. We can fix your ground elevator, too. No worries. So tell me what brings you in today. Again, it's Dakar. Anyway, my service reactor light came on, and then it started flashing and went into emergency shutdown. I limped here on my backup reactor. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so we will diagnose the issue with the reactor, do a basic hull integrity multipoint inspection, check your drive plume, do a free repulsor alignment check to start with. Okay? I only need the reactor looked at. I have cargo to get to its destination that is on a schedule. Sure, sure. We get lots of trader vessels. I get it. I'll get one of my mechanics to look at this right away. Why don't you head to the cafe and get some of the free food? We have food for all species here. There's also a VR and 2D theater and arcade if you get bored. Just keep your commo slate on with the volume up so you don't miss my call. I need you to sign here and authorize the initial diagnosis fee of 1,000 credits. Dakar was shocked at a few things. Free food for all species and all this entertainment for free, but also 1,000 credits just to look at it, not even to fix it. He was only getting 15,000 for this cargo load, and with fuel costing 6,000, he might lose all his profit in this repair. Okay, I don't know what other choice I have. Yay, buddy, I get it. Why don't you grab some food and I'll call you when I know more? Dakar followed the green-colored line on the floor that indicated café and walked for several Canavaran miles before finding the café. This place was absurd. As far as you could see were different places along the walls with different foods. Me on signs in ten different languages, each with the name of the business and smaller signs that listed species compatibility. One thing Dakar noted was that Terran was listed on all of them. Not a single thing here was inedible to these creatures. Dakar slowly meandered through the massive café until he saw three spots that listed Canavaran on their species list next to each other. He approached the first one, and the AI behind the counter greeted him. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell Galactic. How can we help you today? Hi, what are your Canavaran approved meals? Everything on the menu is approved for Navarin consumption. I will have the Galactic Crunch Wrap Supreme with a hard Galactic Taco. Great, here's your cup. Look for the K on the fountain for Navarin's safe hydration option, and hot sauces are on the cart. Your order will be ready when you are done filling your hydration choice. Just as Dakar sat down to start eating his Galactic Tacos, his Camo Slate started ringing. Who dares interrupt my feasting hour? Whoa, dude. It's Andy at the shop. I got updates on your ship, but if you're busy, just call me back. That is not necessary. I was not aware it was you hailing me. What information have you gathered? Ah, uh, well, since you're sitting ill, just roll into it. It's pretty bad, dude. You got a nasty coolant leak which caused your primary reactor to overheat. The radiator is clogged which blew a hose causing the leak. Not sure how you didn't overheat before this. You've got hull integrity issues all over the cargo hold from hyperspace particles that are patch welded but they aren't holding. Your landing repulsors are out of alignment and one of the power steering struts on the right front doesn't work at all. No wonder you came in crooked. Anyway, the good news is it doesn't look like you cracked the reactor case or overheated it enough to warp. We need to fix the coolant leak replace the radiator, top it off, and backfeed and bleed the system so it can burp any Atmo pockets out and not overheat on an Atmo pocket on the thermostat. 
Hull welding with new plate steel. Replace the repulsor strut and get it on the alignment rack so it flies straight. I also want to calibrate your thrusters and fix your drive plume. With the reactor running correctly, I can get you a cleaner burn and a more efficient thrust push to save you fuel. You are burning so much extra fuel by burning dirty. Your thrusters look terrible. Dakar thought about everything Andy just said and wondered how much this would cost and how long it would take. He loses 500 credits for every day he is late with his cargo. He hasn't repaired the ship other than self-repair in many, many cycles. Dakar. How much is this going to cost to fix and how long will it take? Andy. Good news, bad news. The good news is I have all the parts in stock to do this and get you wrapped up later today. The bad news is this going to cost 28,000 credits for everything. The other good news is I should be able to get you about 50% more fuel efficient than before. I'm sorry, Andy, but I do not have that many credits to my name. I am stuck here with cargo losing value by the day and no way to pay for your repairs. No worries, Dokor. We have the Terran Dominion Repair Credit Card. You just sign up with your info and they give you a line of credit you pay back over time at an interest rate. Best not thought about. First six months is 0% thought. So there's that. Also, friendly tip, don't default on that. Terran creditors are relentless. Dakar thought about it long and hard. And what choice did he have? If Andy was not lying, the fuel savings could be put towards this repair bill, and if he got out of here today, he could still make the delivery deadline. He put in the credit application through his commo slate, and it came back instantly approved for 150,000 credits. He could not imagine ever needing that many. He was now glad his was only 28,000. Dakar looked back down at his galactic taco and took a bite and crunched through the crispy shell to the crisp lettuce, juicy tomato, and mild cheese, and then swirled his tongue through his bite to taste the well-seasoned meat. He had never in his life tasted something so flavorful and full of depth. His standard sustenance was a paste in synthetic tube. This taco was absolutely incredible. He had to try more of this station's Canaveran-approved foods. He had to tell his fellow Canaverans about this. He made a note in his Camo slate to tell all of his mates about this station and the food and the Terrans that he met and that they aren't terrifying. Andy. Dude, I got this Canaveran in today and his ship is clapped out. Drive plume burning like dirty diapers. Hyperspace holes everywhere with booger welds holding it shut. Reactor coolant leak. Dude's lucky he didn't overload his reactor and go full fission out there. He is one of the few traders I've seen that didn't bypass all the safety stuff on the reactor to go a little faster or ignore the warning lights. Doug. So is he fixing it? I assume he has got a full load of cargo like they always do. The courier ships are always so beat to hell. I saw the drive plume from my bay. I'm surprised it ran at all. Dude, that was his backup reactor. His main one was even dirtier. I bet he spends close to 6K in credits every time he makes a run. When Manny is done fixing it, this ship is going to run better than when this dude bought it, probably. You know they always buy those ships used out of some used lot and they are just spit-shined hunks of crap. Yay, but this guy seems genuine, you know? Like, we don't see a lot of Navarin out this way, and he seems to be more real, I guess. I mean, I took a few credits off because I like the dude. I'm going to call him and tell him his repairs are almost done and he can head back this way. Dakar was engaged in an intense VR first-person shooter when he felt his camo slate buzz in reality. He paused the game and took off the helmet and let his eyes adjust to the ambient light for a moment before answering the hail. This is Dakar. Speak. Hey there, Dokor. Your ship repairs are almost done if you want to head down to the shop. I will head down there when I am finished in my engagement with this augmented realism machine and no sooner. Andy to Doug. Ha ha ha, Dokor or whatever just hung up on me. He is playing VR and probably loving it. He isn't going to want to leave. Charge him a storage fee per day, plus his lost cargo revenue should motivate him to get out of here. Yay, but you've never seen a new species hit VR, have you? They get totally lost in it. 
I'll call him again right now. What is so important? Hey, just so you know, every hour you don't get your ship after repair incurs a storage charge of 250 credits. That is robbery of the highest order. I did not agree to this. You absolutely did. It's in the fine print on the repair order. I assumed you read it given how long you looked at it for. I will be to your station immediately and no additional charges are to be added. We had an agreement. Andy puts phone on mute to whisper to Doug. Dude, he is on his way right now. Lost his crap on the storage fee. Why, it's on the repair order. I don't know, but he will be. Down here immediately. Takes phone off mute. All right, Dokor. No additional charges. Just get your tuckers down here pronto. I am already on my way. Click. Andy leans to Doug. This dude loves hanging up on me. Ha ha ha. As Dakar got back to the service shop, Andy met him at the cashier window and went over the invoice of all the repairs. To Dakar's satisfaction, there were no additional charges, so he paid with his new credit card and followed Andy as his guided him back towards his ship. Andy. I took the liberty of giving it a good deionization wash to clean off all the space dust and other stuff off. Had one of my detailers go at it with a buffer and we power washed your drive nozzles as part of getting you a more efficient burn. Dakar was stunned. He couldn't believe how much his ship shined. It looked better than when he bought it. This will be the nicest looking ship in his town when he goes home. Andy, I am having a hard time believing this is the same ship I brought you 12 hours ago. This looks brand new. Is this a standard procedure for your service station? Nah, dude. Just wanted to help you out a little. You spent a ton with me, so I wanted to take care of you a little bit to show my appreciation. It's nothing big. Just a little shine and cleaned her up a little. You deceive me. This is a very big thing. I will see to it that every Canaveran in my town knows your name and the location of the station for service needs. They will ask after they see my ship. Perhaps I can even attract a mate with it. I appreciate the referrals. There's a bird dog in it for you if you come through. My translator does not understand the phrase you used of bird dog. Why would I want an extra large flying house pet with huge teeth? Oh, my bad, dude. A bird dog is an old Terran term for a referral bonus. Every Canavaran you send my way, I will put 1,000 credits on your account here for future use. That is very generous of you. Happy to help, Dokor. See you next time. Docker got onto the elevator and pushed the upward key. It smoothly and promptly moved him up into the ship, with very little noise, which was not normal. It normally whined at every aspect of doing its job. And he did say he would fix that too, but I don't recall being charged for it. Dakar got out the parchment-based invoice which seemed archaic and began to read in Terran Dominion standard the charges. He scoured it three times, and nowhere was there a charge for the elevator, the cleaning of the hull or the power washing of the thrust nozzles. Every other repair he had done always had hidden fees. Dakar stared at the document lost in thought. The ship beeped that it was ready to begin leaving the bay, and he snapped to attention. He disengaged the maglocks and turned on the landing repulsors to low, and the ship slowly floated straight up. Dakar did not have to correct or compensate, for it always wanting to drift right, it just hovered up straight. He engaged the forward repulsors to start backing out of the service bay, watching the integrity field go past his ship. When the nose of the ship pulled free, the shield snapped back and wobbled a few times with visible ripples before settling and becoming completely transparent. Dakar engaged the left side repulsor to orientate away from the station and engaged his troller speed thruster that whirred to life emitting a faint hum. Dakar still had six hours to get to the planet he was assigned for the cargo drop. He punched in the coordinates in the mapping computer and engaged the primary reactor. He started at 25% thrust and was thrust back in his seat so hard his hands came off the controls. Warning lights came on the HUDs to regain hand controls, or ship will shut down with downed captain protocols. Dakar mustered his strength and got his hands back on the controls and got the ship back on course. He was flying twice as fast as he ever could at 100% thrust, and this was only 25%.
He looked at his fuel burn computer, and he would get to the target planet in two hours and forty five minutes at current speed, and only use nine percent of his fuel. This was remarkably faster and more efficient than before. He started doing the math in his head. He could do up to twenty more runs per week. He could get his family out of debt and get their own domicile. He needed to finish this run and tell his family the good news, and tell his fellow Cunavaran captains to get their ships tuned up with Andy at the Terran Dominion Ship Repair Facility, Antares or TDSRF, Antares. An incoming hail on his viewing screen, audio only. Dakar toggled it to receive. Elise. Hi there, Dakar. This is Elise with the TDSRF, Antares, calling you with a customer satisfaction survey about the services you had done at our facility. Would you like to do a survey based on your experience with us? Dakar. Yes. Great. On a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how would rate our services? 10. Great. On a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how would you rate your service advisor? 10. Excellent. Last one. On a scale from 1 to 10, with 10 being the best, how would rate our facility and our amenities, service center, cafe, arcade, etc.? 10. That's so great to hear. Any additional comments or feedback? I have purchased an additional 100 of your galactic tacos to share with my townsfolk. They need to be aware of your ability to flavor things that are safe for Canaveran people to eat. Thanks for the comments. Have a great day. Two weeks later, Andy to Doug. Hey, you remember that Canaveran that came in, that, that clapped out hunk that I helped out, and we were kind of surprised he didn't blow up? Yay, kind of why? Dude gave me a perfect survey. Hello, customer satisfaction bonus this month. He also apparently loves galactic tacos. See, I told you, I knew I liked him for a reason. He speaks to me. He is going to end up your size if he eats as many tacos as you do. Hey, rude, but you're not wrong. I do love tacos. I think I'll have those for lunch today. You had tacos yesterday. No, I had burritos. They are different. I am having tacos today, and I hope Dokor is too.